New construction is all the rage in Dallas right now with literally hundreds of thousands of homes to choose from. But if you're going to consider new construction, you need to know the lies so you know what you're getting into. Well, hello, hello, this is Wendy Pinnell. And one of the first lies we see with new construction is what we like to call the incentive lie. Builders often advertise incentives, which are meant to be, you know, discounts or offers that lower your cost, you know, kind of like being on sale. However, you need to know a lot of times these incentives can only be used at their design center or if you use their lender. Okay. So so, well, what's wrong with that? Well, first let's talk about the design center aspect, okay? It is crucial to know what's included and what's not included in the home purchase price. Every builder is gonna be different in what they consider standard and what's not. You know, the more customizable the builder, the more you can expect to be nickel and dimed for every single thing. So in some cases, you may head off, you know, to the design center picturing all the extra bells and whistles you're gonna get with your incentive dollars, only to find out that the standard option for your home doesn't even include ceiling fans in the bedrooms, okay? So as you can imagine, you know, the incentive dollars become a sham real fast if you don't know what's already included with the home. Blake Lofgren, a real estate expert, suggests that buyers should visit the design studio with the sales consultant before signing their contract to help understand what options they'll have to choose from and just to get a clear understanding of what is an included item versus an upgrade. He also reports that these days, buyers are currently spending five to 12% of the home's base price on options to fine tune their new home. So the question you need to ask yourself is, okay, you ready? Is a discount really a discount if it means getting wood look tile in the living room instead of carpet when you never would have settled for carpet? Another thing to consider is have you ever thought about whether the designers are paid a commission on how much you spend? Okay, what is their motivation between having you do standard or an upgrade? Okay, or how about this one, okay? Does the builder have an ownership interest in the design center? Are they padding in additional profit from your choices? Okay, these are things you need to be aware of when considering just how far a design center incentive will really go. Another incentive you really need to think twice about is one that requires you to use the builder's lender. Lenders charge different fees and sometimes the builder's lender will way overcharge on their fees. It's a way they collect profit while making it look like they're offering you an incentive. Like you might think you're getting a discount towards your closing costs, when in fact you end up paying way more for your closing costs than you ordinarily would have. So what does this mean for you as a potential home buyer? Well, you need to be asking yourself, is this incentive really an incentive, okay? Take the time to ask questions about what's included in the purchase price, the fees charged by the builder's lender, and any other potential hidden costs. Moving on to lie number two, let's talk about builder contracts. With resale properties, realtors use the standard TREC contract form designed to protect both the buyer and seller equally. However, with new construction, Builders require you to use their contract forms, which are designed by their attorneys to benefit and protect them. So you may go into a contract with certain assumptions, okay? And while these aren't exactly lies, right? There are some clauses that could absolutely blindside you, okay? They may very well seem like lies to you, something you can't imagine any contract ever having. So here are some clauses you need to be aware of when you're considering a new construction contract. Okay, the first one is, what happens if you don't close on time? Okay, some contracts may include a clause that penalizes you massively by the day or allows the contract to be immediately terminated if you can't close on time. So picture this, okay? Your new build home has gone up $50,000 in value since you first went under contract 10 months ago. Even though it isn't technically your home yet, you have something called equitable title, okay? Meaning that $50,000, that $50,000 in equity, it should be yours instead. If your lender can't close you by the day your contract expires, that equity could all go back to the seller. They can simply terminate the contract and sell it to someone else, okay? And just like that, 
you've lost your home and that $50,000 in equity, and you agreed to that when you signed the contract. Another wild card is the appraisal shortage. Your lender's going to order an appraisal to verify that the collateral, okay, meaning your new home, is worth what they're lending on it. Now, if the appraisal comes in for less than the contract price, it will be up to you to pay for the appraisal shortage. The builder is not going to lower the price. Now, one way to avoid this is you need to be cautious about getting too many upgrades because this can increase your contract price beyond what your home will appraise for. And I have to tell you, I have yet to read a new construction contract that didn't have the appraisal clause. It basically says, if the appraisal comes in short, okay, you, the buyer, will make up the difference in cash. Uh, many of the contracts will just include, include like a short paragraph about it, but I do have to give a shout out here to Bloomfield Homes on this one, okay? Their contract includes an entire page discussing the nuances of home appraisals, you know, kind of preparing you for what could happen. So way to go Bloomfield on that one. Excellent disclosure. Yet another wild card, and this one tends to strike buyers as particularly egregious, is the convenience clause, okay? This clause allows the builder to terminate the contract for no reason or any reason at all, okay? It means that even if you've met all your obligations, the builder can still terminate the contract. The verbiage typically is gonna read something like this. Seller may also terminate this contract for seller convenience for any or no reason at all, okay? Yeah, <laughs> that clause actually exists in many builder contracts. And with that clause, you can kiss your equitable title goodbye for no reason at all. Now, as icing on the cake, usually those contracts are also going to include this clause. Buyer shall have no right to specific performance. The property tax wild card is another one we need to talk about. At closing, the builder will pay prorated property taxes based on how the house is assessed at the time of closing. Many of them will have a specific clause saying the proration at closing is final, that they're not going to pay any shortage afterward. Well, since it's new construction, the assessment is often based on the land value only. By the time the tax bill rolls around, okay, the property is valued for both the land and the home. And just like that, you end up with a massive escrow shortage your first year. Now, I wanna throw in a little freebie here, okay? Imagine a builder has an inventory home, okay? Meaning it's fully complete and ready to sell, and it's been sitting around for a while. If the tax value has transitioned from land only to land plus house, and the tax bill is coming due, how motivated do you think that builder will be to get that home sold? Yeah, real motivated. <laughs> so keep in mind, in Texas, property tax bills are released in the fall, okay? Generally October or November, and the actual payment is due by February 1. Don't you know that builder wants to sell that home before that new assessment comes due, and then most definitely before that bill comes due. Now, here's another wild card you may never have thought of. Some contracts will include a clause saying you can never put up a four lease sign in front of the house. And a lot of times there's no specific expiration on that clause, okay? So how long is that clause enforceable? Do you really wanna have to go the legal route to find out? Imagine if you wanna turn your home into a rental several years from now and you signed this clause not really paying attention to what you were signing. So I just, I can't emphasize enough, okay? Make sure you never buy a new construction home without understanding the builder contract. Moving on to lie number three, it is essential to understand when a discount is really a discount. Builders often advertise prices slashed and discounted homes, but is it really a discount? Your first thing to keep in mind is this, a discounted home with tons of upgrades isn't necessarily a bargain. Okay, when a builder tells you that you're getting $200,000 in upgrades, have you ever thought about how they arrived at the price of those upgrades? Like, how do you know that's what the upgrades are really worth? Or here's another one, okay? Compared to another builder, are they even considered upgrades in the first place? Or might they just be, you know, standard? And you know, also, are they even upgrades you would even want, okay? For example, is the $200 back porch light something that's of any value to you? Okay, so it is crucial to ask these questions and evaluate the true value of these so-called discounts. Okay, so here's another one. How about the deeply discounted home that doesn't have any upgrades? That's not a bargain either. I mean, imagine walking into a model home and the sales consultant greets you with a, hey there, Mr. Customer, we'll discount this particular inventory home $60,000 off the list price. Wow, that sounds fantastic, right? So you go and look at the home, 
and it has builder grade carpet, cheap globe lights instead of ceiling fans, regular windows in the master bathroom instead of the frosted ones. Okay, you get the idea in there? You need to look out for the details. Okay, is this discount really a discount? Or with everything it doesn't have, would you still be overpaying? So each individual element of a home has value. And some differences, okay, such as like, you know, cheap you know, builder's grade carpet versus wood look tile, those can be like in the twenty to $30,000 range. So a home with no upgrades should be priced as a home with no upgrades. Something else you should consider is this. Don't buy the most expensive house in the neighborhood even if it has the deepest discounts, okay? Often the biggest homes in a community may have the steepest discounts, okay? They're the costing the builder the most money to hold onto them and they won't be liquid in that neighborhood. However, even if they are beautifully upgraded and a good price compared to actual value, it's just not the best idea to buy the nicest home in the neighborhood. You always want there to be nicer homes than yours that will bring your home up in value. Moving on to lie number four, it is essential that you understand the list price lie before diving in. Contrary to popular belief, the list price of a home has nothing to do with its true value. I mean, it's easy to assume that if a gallon of milk is worth $3, then a $400,000 house must be worth $400,000, right? Well, unfortunately, this assumption is not accurate, okay? And builders often take advantage of this misconception. Anytime you see a list price, don't take it at face value. Instead, obtain a comparative market analysis to get an idea of the property's value based on previous sales, okay? Think of the definition of value as what a ready, willing, and able buyer is willing to pay a ready, willing, and able seller. A realtor can look at past sales and provide you with this information. Also, don't be fooled by the price reduction, okay? If you see a home with a 50% price reduction, you might get super excited. You know, feel that adrenaline rush. You're like, yes, this is a great deal. I need to buy this before anyone else gets it first, right? I mean, really, this is the classic definition of FOMO, right? That fear of missing out. But let's just say you saw a gallon of milk priced at $10 that was reduced to $5. Would you still race to buy it? Well, in Dallas, a gallon of milk typically costs around $3. So my point is a huge price reduction doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a good deal. A home that's worth $600,000 that started off listing at 700,000 and then was reduced to 620 still isn't a bargain. Okay, and this is why it's so important to use a realtor when purchasing new construction, okay? Texas is a non-disclosure state, meaning you'll need a realtor's services to get all that knowledge on sales data. And which, speaking of which, if we sound like the right person for the job, you're definitely gonna wanna check out our Let's Find Home questionnaire that you can find in the description section. Kind of going along these lines, another thing to be aware of is the lot premium wildcard. Don't assume that the price of the lot is included in whatever price the sales consultant quotes. Okay, sometimes there are lots that are included in the price, while in other communities, there are extra charges on every lot. A sales consultant may show you a map like this one of Hewland Trails in South Fort Worth. Okay, you can see the green lots are the ones for sale, and each green lot with a red circle has an extra lot premium that's not included in the list price. Next up, let's talk about the PID lie. But before we do that, you need to understand what a PID is. PID stands for Public Improvement District. According to Texas A&M's Research Center, a PID is a defined geographic area established to provide specific types of improvements or maintenance within that area. Now, you might be wondering how a PID comes into existence. Well, property owners, including developers and businesses, can petition cities and counties to create a PID. Okay, they can then obtain financing for the desired improvements through bonds, which are repaid through special assessments levied by the city or county. So what kind of improvements are we talking about here? Okay, well, texas.gov states that these can range from landscaping, okay, to establishing or improving parks, and even offering special supplemental services for recreation. The important thing to remember is that property owners within a PID have a tax against their property to repay the bonds 
in addition to their regular property taxes. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about the PID lie. The first way this shows up is when a builder fails to disclose the existence of a PID. Okay, this used to be a huge issue with entire new construction communities being blindsided by undisclosed PIDs. But since then, the Texas legislature passed HB 1543 to strengthen PID disclosure notices to buyers and penalties for sellers who fail to deliver the notice. So Texas law now requires disclosure, but you should never assume as the buyer that it will be disclosed. Again, as the buyer, you are responsible for doing your own due diligence. Another thing you run into with the PID lie, is when a builder claims that the value of the home includes the amenities, okay? They'll be like, yes, I realize this is a pitiful lot, but part of the value of this home is in the amenities. Well, no, you as the buyer will be paying for those amenities through the PID, and that's a completely separate issue than the purchase price. So don't be misled into paying more by those kinds of claims. Now, some of the most luxurious master plan subdivisions are funded by PIDs. So if you want a beautiful lazy river, be prepared to pay the PID. However, one strategy you might want to consider is looking for areas with lower property taxes. Like a prime example of this is the upcoming Mosaic community in Salina. That's actually within Denton County instead of Collin County. And Denton County has some of the lowest property taxes in the entire Dallas area. So in the end, it doesn't end up seeming like you're paying all that much more to pay the PID. All right, now let's talk about the amenity lie. Amenities are those lovely extras that often draw us into a particular community, right? We're talking about like oh, that sparkling community pools, sports courts, playgrounds, fitness centers. You might see a stunning community pool and think to yourself, <laughs> this is the life for me. But hang on a minute there, cowboy, okay? Because there's some things you need to consider before making your decision. First, builders typically have like a rule of thumb of like 800 to 1,000 residents per community pool, okay? But you need to verify the per capita utility in the community you're considering, okay? Let's just say there's only one pool for 3,000 residents. Imagine how crowded and chaotic that could become. Okay, so instead of enjoying, you know, your serene water oasis, you might find yourself like ridiculously crowded and stressed. I mean, what is the point in having and paying for a community pool if you can never use it? Secondly, you need to determine whether the amenities you're excited about are already in place or are they just, you know, part of the developer's plans, okay? It's not uncommon for developers to discuss potential amenities that may never come to fruition or take much longer than anticipated. Okay, so make sure to ask whether these amenities are guaranteed or if they're simply ideas being tossed around. The third aspect to consider is the timeline for the amenities completion, especially if you're buying before they're constructed. If a developer promises that certain amenities will be available during phase two, find out when that phase will be completed. Are we talking about a year? or possibly three years down the line. You need to have a clear understanding of the timeline to avoid disappointment after moving in. Now, a great example that comes to mind about this is the Venetian community in Salina, located like right near Weston and McKinney. It's kind of like right on the edge there. Buyers are purchasing homes there long before the lagoon is built, okay? Those who bought a year ago, may not have realized that the lagoon would barely be started by now. So once again, you have to do your due diligence before committing to a new construction home. And you're not just buying the home, okay? Keep in mind, this is not just about the home. You're also buying the community. So are you ready now to dig into the new construction market? If so, I made an entire video on where you can find affordable new construction that you can watch right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.